like a fine wine that ages with time, some guns get more valuable every day. For most gun enthusiasts, it's a rule of thumb to hold on to guns, but that's especially true for these firearms. If you own any of these guns, hold on tight because they should continue to rise in value. Better yet, if you happen to run across one of these firearms for sale, it might be a good idea to purchase it. Forget stocks and bonds. Any of these guns could deliver a strong return on investment given the right purchase price. Without further ado, here's our list of the 10 guns you should never sell under any circumstances. Browning High Power The High Power is one of John Moses Browning's finest designs. And although it is possible to still find high-power pistols at dealers across the U.S., the high power is technically out of production. When it was introduced early in the 20th century, the Browning High Power 9mm pistol was a revelation. It offered the perfect balance of handling, size, and firepower with an impressive 13-round magazine capacity. Over the years, the high power has aged gracefully and continues to have a loyal following. Whether you're a novice or a seasoned shooter, you will appreciate the fine craftsmanship and function of these classic pistols, the sure heft of the machined steel frame and slide, and their natural pointability. If you pick one up, you'll marvel at all the matte black design. The steel slide and the machined steel frame have a rugged matte black epoxy finish. Colt Model 1873 The Colt Model 1873 Revolver universally known as the Colt Single Action Peacemaker or Frontier, is one of the most popular and legendary small arms in the USA. It is also one of the longest living production small arms, being produced for 130 years and still popular. In 1873, the U.S. Army adopted this revolver along with its black powder centerfire cartridge of 45 caliber and issued it to troops in two models. The Army Cavalry model had a 7.5-inch barrel, and the Artillery model had a 5.5-inch barrel. Both were chambered in 45 Colt. It is a single-action, six-shot, solid-frame revolver. The cylinder is loaded by single rounds via side-swinging loading gate, located at the right side of the frame. Since this handgun has no special drop-proof safeties, it is strongly recommended that it should be carried with the empty chamber under the hammer with only five rounds loaded. The single action army is seen fitted with many different types of grips, the most common being wood, vulcanite, ivory, pearl, and staghorn. Walther P-38 Like the P-08, Walther P-38 was quite popular with troops so armed. It was much more reliable and rugged than the Luger P-08, the P-38 was the first pistol to combine a locked breech with a DASA trigger, whereby the hammer could rest with a round in the chamber, and the first shot could be fired in double action mode with subsequent shots fired in the single action mode. This design has been copied numerous times, up to and including today for most modern pistols, until the advent of the striker-fired pistol. The P-38 even enjoyed the respect of many Allied soldiers. Wartime captured P-38s found their way to the hips of many in the infantry, paratroopers, and pilots. After the war, the market became flush with surplus P-38s. Many were brought to the States as wartime souvenirs by returning soldiers. The P-38 was made in a number of variants. Early experimentation with chamberings like 38 Super and 45 ACP didn't go far. A few chambered in 765 by 21 mm Parabellum and 22 long rifle versions were also manufactured and sold. Walther also made a P-38K with a short barrel, but it is actually made from the P-4 pistol. Very few of these were made. Consequently, they are very high priced. Zig Sauer P-210 With a history that dates back to 1947, the Sig Sauer P-210 was the combat handgun for the Swiss military and is regarded as one of the most legendary, reliable, and accurate firearms in the world. The Sig commercial design designation for the pistol was initially SP-47-8, 
This changed to P210 in 1957 to match SIG's nomenclature. The commercial pistol lacks the military version's loaded chamber indicator. In 2020, Sig Sauer brings this venerable pistol back to the market with a new P210 standard. A modern interpretation of the classic pistol, it keeps the same sleek lines and comfortable handling, while adding modern features, such as a push-button magazine release and thumb safety. The P210 also features three-dot contrast sights, classically styled walnut grips, as well as carrying on the legacy of a superb single-action match-grade trigger. The precision machine stainless steel slide and frame continue the tradition of craftsmanship while providing an extremely accurate gun for modern match environments. The Sig Sauer P210 standard is imbued with the style and craftsmanship of the original while adding the features expected in a modern handgun to create something distinctive in a market of contemporary handguns. Colt Detective Special When it was introduced in 1927, Colt's standard service revolvers were the Army Special, Police Positive Special, and Official Police. Realizing there was a need for a more easily concealed revolver than these 4- and 6-inch revolvers, they began production of a snub-nose model. A derivative of the old Colt Police Positive, the Detective Special was produced to meet the market demand for a gun that was easily concealed. It proved very popular, and over 1.5 million were produced in several models by the time production finally ended in 1986. Though originally offered in 32 caliber, the most common of the Colt Detective Specials were chambered for the 38 special cartridge fed from a six-shot cylinder and had a two-inch barrel. It is a classic style, swing-out cylinder, double-action compact revolver with fixed-blade front sight and notch-style rear sights, and full-length ejector rod. The Detective Special is an old gun, yet it still manages to keep up in this world of Wonder Pocket pistols due to the demand for small and reliable pistols. Luger P08 9mm Pistol George Luger designed one of the world's most iconic pistols. It is one of the first modern, mass-produced, semi-automatic, detachable-box, magazine-fed handguns. It was the first gun chambered in what is now the world's most popular centerfire handgun cartridge, the 9x19, also called the 9mm Luger. The Luger P08 was first produced in 1900 and was quickly adopted by German forces. As such, its first combat experience came in the form of World War I as a common sidearm. While popular, its main drawbacks such as limited reliability showed in the mud and blood of the trenches. Following the First World War, the Luger was once again adopted by German forces for the Second World War. Here, it was more popular with officers, as a specialty weapon. This also led to it being considered a treasure among the soldiers looting the dead bodies of German soldiers. Though, by late 1944, any Allied soldier captured having a Luger in his possession was most likely executed if found by German troops. Nonetheless, they were still kept in the hundreds as trophies. The Luger P08 ceased production in 1945, and by this time, thousands had been made. Colt 1911 One of the most popular handguns ever made, the M1911 set the standard for the 20th century pistol. As we look back on firearms that helped American soldiers fight for freedom, it's impossible not to devote some time to the 1911A1 in 45 ACP. The standard issue sidearm for the U.S. Armed Forces from 1911 until 1986, the M1911 has even been modified for use in various service branches to this day. Colt is the only brand that has continuously produced model 1911A1s since World War II. During the war, Colt delivered nearly 400,000. The Colt 1911 was developed by Browning during the Philippine-American War because troops needed more stopping power from their weapons. The 45 caliber rounds of the Colt offered just that. On many documented occasions, a single shot from a 45 provided enough power to decisively stop an enemy. As part of the 1st Marine Division in 1944, the legendary Colonel Walter Walsh did just that following the invasion of Okinawa, Japan. 
it was witnessed that he used an M1911 to shoot a Japanese sniper at 80 yards, demonstrating its accuracy potential with one-hand shooting. American soldiers fighting close-quarter battles have often reached for an M1911, and the 45 has proved to be a reliable performance benchmark. Though modern M1911s may possess DNA from John Browning's masterpiece, historic collectors prefer the original mil-spec configurations, or something very close to it.